turn this on for the first time there's gonna be two things that jump out at you one it is very different on the operating system in the UI than the other devices the touch Lux 5 the touch HD 3 etc this one is very very different the second thing is that there is no touch screen and for a 2020 product this might seem a little weird which we completely understand it is a little weird to not have a touch screen to be able to navigate things very simply but just to start you guys off this is not a spec powerhouse device this is an 80 dollar device and it's still running ian carta 6 inch screen with an hd resolution and an sd card slot so this does have a lot going for it the os is very different you have these big four buttons down below with a list of your books and everything you've preloaded into there if you go to the settings the settings are very much akin to everything that is basically on the pocketbook line you have your languages date time power saving etc another major drawback is that there's no home button and pressing the back button and the forward button actually don't do anything so if you're at the bottom of a page you actually have to navigate all the way up to the home button on the software driven element there and press that Despite the fact that it does not have a touchscreen, the library looks really nice actually. So we can open up a book like that. And this is the real world test of how you're going to be opening up a book, turning the pages, etc. So you can turn the pages with the directional buttons or of course the page turn buttons that's the point that's why they're there if you long press you can see that it doesn't do anything immediately it takes about three seconds and then it skips by 10 and this is very much the same as most pocketbook devices in the bottom corner on the higher end devices there will be a counter and they will jump by tens now you might be wondering how do you take notes and annotations because well there's no long press you do that by pressing the center button. From here you get a pop-up grid of rotate bookmark search, etc. So you can go down to note and then what it will do is it will jump in with your cursor. And now that you have your cursor, you can go word by word or line by line and click on something. And then when you click on it, you will see it made a highlight and this is how you highlight and then when you go back you will see that the highlight is still there so it is a lot more steps we understand that and that's because the lack of touchscreen we very well are aware of that and you have to know what you're getting same with all of the page augmentation now this is very much the same as all the other pocketbook devices minus the fact that you can't nav over to it very quickly but you can change your fonts and choose your bold, italicize, etc. And you do have status bar and built-in page numbering on or off as well. Typing is not enjoyable on this device. You don't have T9, you don't have QWERTY, you don't have ABC, and you don't even have predictive text. It's basically these three grids of, well, what is QWERTY, but it's separated for some reason. And you click on something and it shows up with S, but at the same point, it's not even giving you suggestions. So typing is very difficult and it goes back every single time. So if I wanted to write SO and it would just go back to that, in which case I would have to navigate over once more. So the typing experience is pretty bad on this device. We would say use this device for mostly reading pages of a book rather than trying to take notes, annotations, etc. Much like the other devices in their lineup, they have a fair amount of applications, which is really weird because the input on this device is very difficult, but they have Snake and Chess and Calendar and Sudoku, so if you did need to do some applications, they actually have you covered with a few things that might keep you enjoyed while you're waiting for maybe your store download or your PC link or just while you're charging it up. You guys might think we're out of our minds trying to load PDFs on this device, but it does have an HD screen, so PDFs have a little bit of validity on this device. If you did need to run PDFs, here's what it's going to look like. Now it is very small, of course, you can see just the size of your hands. It's a tiny screen. Most smartphones are getting as big as e-readers nowadays. And don't expect to have much functionality once you're actually in it. You get the same 9 grid layout, in which case you can click note 
and you will get a very tiny little cursor where you can go through all the text and it will get to all the text and recognize all of it and form itself respectively to the size of text that you're on but once you're there you click on that it takes quite a bit of time to actually take a note and then it gets your highlight all done there so it, it's not a very good experience but honestly it does run PDFs and it, it does look good for what it is a lot of people might be asking why this exists well I'm happy it exists full range manufacturers like pocketbook onyx etc you need a basic device and let's not forget this is an $80 device that's a very cheap e-reader in the world of e-readers even the Kindle line is getting up there they have a $450 Oasis 3 so Having an $80 device in a full range manufacturer is actually a very nice play. It is basic, it doesn't have a touch screen, but it does have an HD screen with an SD card slot. So you have to take it for what it is. This thing for what it is, pound for pound, is fantastic. Just don't expect to have the touch functionality and familiarity with their other devices. If you want to see more devices like this or anything else e-ink related, go to youtube.com slash goodyreader. And for a review of the Pocketbook Basic 4, this is Peter.